Fireside Coffee here and I'm going to show you the 812 463 thousandth video on how to make a cat food alcohol stove or as some say a fancy feast stove I know it's a copyrighted thing but whatever and I know there's like I said all these videos out there on this but I know that there probably are one or two or maybe a few of my subscribers who have not even seen this stove or how it works so I'm gonna show you how to make one easily cheaply and I'll show you how well it works so what you will need as far as tools is a scissors a marker a hole punch this is optional ruler or some way to measure and a way to cut steel I'm using my Dremel with a metal cutting blade and if you're going to use a Dremel obviously safety first use your safety glasses you don't have to use a Dremel you can use a hacksaw you can use a metal snips whatever you prefer I just prefer to use a Dremel because it's easier and as far as the products you will need you will need a piece of carbon felt or some sort of wicking material you can use the fiberglass cloth that is used in auto body for fixing uh, holes I'm just going to use the carbon felt because I have it and it seems to be a little bit better performing you can also use house insulation um, I wouldn't recommend that but I know there are a lot of videos out there people that have used that I wouldn't use insulation in my my stove but that's just me that's up to you you need a can of cat food you a three ounce can um, this is what I'll be using and you need a seven ounce can most people use tomato paste cans but you need a seven ounce can of something I got this at the dollar store it's just sweetened condensed milk um, it was cheap it was handy and there I couldn't find a seven ounce can of tomato paste there so there you go so this is what you're gonna need I showed you the tools you're gonna need I'm gonna show you how easy this is to make it okay so first and foremost what you will need to do is you will need to obviously empty out your cans so if you have a cat this is great if not well then you do what you got to do this is turkey feast and gravy yummy so I guess the best way to empty this is to just eat it Um, it's actually pretty good. It's not bad at all. Waste not, my friends. It's actually really good. Turkey feast and gravy. I actually might get some more of that okay guys we're gonna move on mmm I can't get over how good that is mm -mm -mm. hmm not bad at all my friends okay I should wash it down with this, but I'm not going to drink this. I'm not much for sweetened condensed milk, especially, I don't know. So, we'll get rid of this. Oh, no, I ain't drinking that. Sorry, folks. Ain't no way that Fireside is drinking that stuff. 
I mean, you tell me, how am I supposed to drink this? Look at this. No, I ain't drinking that. All right, let me get this washed out and I'll be right back. Okay, so I cleaned out my containers and I took the stickers off. So the next step is going to be on the cat food cans with the pull top. What you're going to have is this little area in here that can be, um, you know, a little sharp. So one way to get rid of that is just take a pen, or in this case I'm using a marker. And as you can see, all I'm doing is just going around the edge and flattening that down. Just to help avoid any future problems with cutting yourself or anything like that. Doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be all the way down. As a matter of fact, if you leave it up a little bit, it will help to hold the carbon felt in. Okay, so pretty much that's it. I forgot to mention the other tool you would need is a can opener to get your your lid off. Now, I do believe the uh, tomato paste cans do have the pull top that take the entire lid like the cat food can, but unfortunately I didn't have that, so I had to cut that off. All right, so now the next step is going to be you want to put your cans together, and what you want to do is approximately one inch is what they call the sweet spot. That's where you get your most efficient and hottest flame. So what you want to be is one inch, one inch above the cat food can is where you want to have your can end. So roughly about in that area, that's how much I want to cut off. So now to do that, what you do is flip your can over. This is going to be your finish end, this rolled edge. So you want that up. So you're going to be cutting the bottom of your can over. So put it in there and you want to measure one inch from the top of your cat food can up and that's where you're going to cut. Okay, so what you want to do is get something that's going to be close to your one inch. And it doesn't have to be exactly one inch, but as close as you can get it. In my case, I'm using two Eagles coasters. Yes, they do have to be Eagles coasters in order for this stove to work right. If you've got cowboy coasters, this is not going to work. So basically, all I'm doing is turning the can to give me a nice level mark of where I need to cut. Now see, here was my one inch. This was my one inch mark here, right here. So I'm not off by that much. That's, that's good enough for me. I'm fine with that. And don't forget, you want to cut from the bottom of your can. You want this top rolled edge to be your finished edge. So now all you will do is take a Dremel. Now this is important. You've got to get this as even as possible. That's the reason for using a marker and getting a nice even line there. If this sets uneven in your cat food can, it's going to make your pot sit uneven. It's not Your pot won't sit exactly flat on top of here. So you've got to get this as even as possible. So I'm going to go and cut this out with the Dremel. And uh, through the magic of video, it's probably going to take me about 10 minutes to get it as straight as possible. But through the magic of video, you guys, I will be back in about one and a half seconds. Okay, and I'm back. And there you go. I like the Dremel because it makes a much nicer, clean, straight cut. Just take your time. And then I just went over it with a file to cut off some of the sharper edges. And this is what you're left with. That's about how much you should have left after you cut off your 7 ounce can. Be it tomato paste or sweetened condensed milk like I had, whatever. But it's about what you have left. I'm actually going to save this because I might come up with some kind of stove option. We'll see. So, you know me. Waste not, want not. And 
as you can see, it sits nice and level in there. Okay, so now we'll move on to the next step. The next step, and what you need your hole punch for, is along the bottom here, you have to make a way for the fuel to get from inside the center ring out to your carbon felt. So, you can just cut a notch in, you can do whatever. Uh, I've seen a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll use this hole punch, just a standard hole punch, and just make like a half hole like that. And I'm going to do four of them. And this way it will guarantee you that you can get your... Well, that one didn't work so well. There we go. This way it will guarantee that your fuel will get out to your wick. Which is what your carbon felt basically is going to do is it's going to act like a wick. So there you go. Just need some notches. Last thing you also need your hole punch for is you have to put a pressure, basically like a pressure relief hole up top. You can do one or two. I'm going to do two actually. Now this uh, hole punch I thought was a pretty good hole punch, but it's actually not doing too well here. No, it's not. I think I'm bending the darn thing. Oh! Uh-oh. Well, I don't think I needed that part anyway. Let's see. Hmm. Uh-oh. I'm not going to worry about it. So. There we go. See, that's the thing with my videos, guys. You get bloopers and all. I don't only really show the good stuff. Anytime I edit stuff out as if I'm doing too much, um, uh, well, uh, I sneeze, I say a bad word. This is a family friendly channel here. So, alright. So there we go. That's what you want. We're almost done, guys. Now, one nice thing too I, I noticed about this is on the tomato paste can, a lot of times you'll have that plastic inner liner, um, that BPA free liner that they put inside metal cans now. Um, and what you'll have to do is burn that off, take it outside once your stove's complete, put some fuel in it, light it up, and let it burn off for a while, maybe even burn it off twice just to make sure you get all that plastic lining out. Now with this, it doesn't have that, so that's actually a pretty nice, pretty nice advantage to using that condensed milk can. Now, the last step is what you want to do is you want to take your carbon felt and you want to measure around your can to get your length and you want to be a little bit higher than this lip. Just a little bit higher. And this acts as your wicking material. Probably the hardest part of the entire project is this. Alright, so when you put your your carbon felt down. Now I'm a little bit, I've got this a little long here, so I'm gonna trim it off a little bit. Make sure your carbon felt is covering these holes that you allow the fuel to go through. You need your your felt to be around there. Actually it's still a little long too. This stuff after over time will shrink too so you don't want to be too short. You want to make it short. It'll stretch but you want to try to keep it as close as possible. That's overlapping a little bit. I think I'm going to leave it like that because I do know that it's going to shrink. This is the hardest part here. Trying to get all this into this can and getting it smushed down in there. So this takes a little bit of time, a little bit of patience. Um, I think what I'm going to do is get this shoved down in there off camera and come back. I mean you guys get the idea. It's not like I'm tricking you into doing something different. But let me do that and I'll come right back. 
Okay, so basically what I did is I'm just using the edge of my file that I used to shave down the, the can. And I'm just shoving that down there. Make sure your can is seated completely. And I'm just going to go around and make sure that that carbon felt is down in there. Double check, make sure your can is seated. Okay, I think we're looking pretty good. So that's what it'll look like. Now, look down in your can and make sure that where all these holes are, you can see black felt. If you can't, then pull your can out if you need to and shove the felt back in. But that needs to be covering those holes in order to wick the material up. So guys, there we go. That is a completed Fancy Feast can, or I'm sorry, cat food can alcohol stove. So we're going to fire it up. I'm probably going to do it outside just because I don't know about this plastic liner that's on a cat food can, what that might do. So I'm going to take it outside and fire it up and see what we have. Ooh, it sure is chilly out here. Okay, one more look at it, guys. That's what it should look like. Your felt up a little bit from the top. Don't forget your two holes. And also your, make sure your carbon felt is around your little drain holes there. So, I'm gonna put some fuel in. And we're gonna fire her up. I'm gonna give it a minute for it to soak up into the carbon felt. As you can see, it's already there's nothing in the bottom there. It's already started wicking up to the felt. So, here we go, guys. Um, not quite burning yet. Give it a little bit more. This is a new, a new carbon felt, so the wick's kind of dry. I think we're going to be all right now. Yep, there we go. I just didn't give it enough time. So you're not going to be able to see this well because it's a clear, clean burning flame, and trust me, folks, that is burning. So I don't know if there's a way that I can show you the flame. I don't know if that helps. I'm gonna bring you down a little bit. All right, I just brought you down a little bit. I didn't know if you were gonna be able to see that flame or not. Maybe now you can. So there you go. And like I said, all I'm going to do is let this burn for a while. And uh, I'm going to let it burn out and I'll probably put some more fuel in and let it burn more. And that will burn off any impurities on those cans. And that's it guys. We will do a boil test. I will show you how well these stove works. They are actually one of the best, if not the best, alcohol stove out there. Even including manufactured, bought, whatever. It's a DIY stove that is the best so I'm gonna do some burn offs on it let it burn everything out let it cool back down and then we'll do a boil test be right back okay so as promised we're gonna do a boil test I have 10 ounces of water in here which is like I said what my Keurig, the highest setting is 10 ounces, and that's what I brew for a cup of coffee. So that's what I'm used to. So I'm 
going to replicate how it would be in a power outage if I needed to, if I wanted to make a cup of coffee. I know that my carrier gives 10 ounces and that's what I'm gonna do. So I've got 10 ounces of water. I have my timer set at 192, which is, according to Kerrig, the perfect temperature for coffee. So, the water is starting at 70 degrees. I've already added my fuel to the stove. And that is lit. probes in the water set that on and we'll go turn some lighting out here so you can see the flame a little better and we'll see where that goes once again 192 10 ounces of water starting at 70 degrees. Lower you down here, see if you can see the flame a little bit better. Sorry guys, I'm trying to get you down there to see the flame a little bit better. There we go. All right, four minutes, 18 seconds, not bad. These stoves are great. Now you know how to make them. They're easy, they're cheap. So there you go. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.